that in trying to understand consciousness, we sometimes just think we know what we're talking about and then come up with various explanations. Uh, I like to pull it back and look at consciousness and say, say, what is this thing we're trying to explain? And one of the ways to go about it is to say, you know, it doesn't have a purpose. Everything else we try to explain has a purpose, and uh, especially bio in biology uh, generated through evolution, uh, it has a purpose. So if we look at consciousness and, and ask, what is its purpose? How does it work? What are the kinds of areas that we should explore? Okay, so let me say, we do not know anything about the, purpose, the evolutionary <laughs> purpose of consciousness. Uh, everything that anybody will say about it is pure speculation. Mm -hmm. Um, myself, I, one speculation I like is that it's at least original purpose might have been motivational. Although there is a problem with that. The, um, William Paley, uh, uh, long ago, um, asked, made the following point. And I, I don't actually, I've never read Paley, but I read about this in an article by Stephen Jay Gould. He said, well, we know why the bird copulates. Because it's fun. We can see the birds having a good time. Uh -huh. But why does the bird sit on the nest, sit on the egg on the nest? You know, he seems to be having a miserable time, you know, for day in, day in, day out. Um, and so you might wonder if the purpose of, of uh, original purpose of consciousness is motivational. Um, it seems like evolution had another motivational mechanism. <laughs> why didn't it just use that? But So I don't know the answer to that. Uh, but it is an interesting, you know, question. I think one thing we can think about when we talk about consciousness is that uh, it is a fact about consciousness that when we when something is conscious it's usable by all of our cognitive systems so it may be that one of the purposes of consciousness is to get something into the global workspace which allows it to be available to all those systems certainly there are more we can do more sophisticated things with conscious uh, processes than with unconscious process. We can do a two-step reasoning as opposed to a one-step reasoning. More, um, we can do just more complex, flexible uh, kinds of, um, of tasks when they are when the representations are conscious than when they're unconscious. Um, so that must have something to do with it. But what? Yeah. It How about a uh, focus of attention? Uh, because attention is something that. Uh, um, husbands the resources of the brain so when you're focused on something you can do something and I'm if I'm writing something I'm concentrating on a very small percentage of my, my yeah. total visual space and I'm, and I'm putting all my mind on one thing that I have to do so really attention my is, is there a relationship between consciousness and attention which is biologically useful well one thing attention does is it intensifies consciousness intensifies conscious experience. It makes things look bigger, okay. faster, okay, sure. um, um, more higher in contrast, more saturated in color. So that is, it's a causal effect of attention. Okay, so, so that's going in one direction. You're saying that uh, attention can create effects on consciousness. Yes, my colleague Marissa Carrasco uh, wrote a paper in 2004 called um, uh, attention affects appearance, in which he showed that. Mm, okay. Uh, how about in the other direction? Does is consciousness could consciousness play a part in the in the creation or the generation of attention? Sure. We have conscious experiences which cause us to be looking for certain things. That's uh, um, uh, so-called um, um, property-based attention, where we we want to know is there a red thing in my vicinity because of our conscious processes. So that's top-down attention. There's also bottom-up attention, which consciousness has no role in. It's something just attracts our attention. Mm -hmm. Reflex, like a reflex. Yeah, like a reflex, yeah. Yeah, but so, so we see then the relationship between attention and consciousness, which are clearly not the same thing, yes. uh, but have a, 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 a dual directionality. Dual directionality, actually. And, and each yeah. one affects the other, but it's not entirely symmetrical. I mean, each one has a different effect yeah. on the other. Um, in terms of there not being the same thing, the most impressive work on this has been done by Robert Kentridge, in which he has shown that you can have um, attentional phenomena in unconscious perception, for example, in blind sight. Mm. The attention of a blind sight patient can be attracted to an area in the blind field uh, with measurable results, 
even though the the, the uh, blind sight subject isn't aware of it at all. So, so if, you ask, if you ask the person, do you see that? No, right. it's absolutely not. Yeah, and that they have no idea that their their attention is being moved by right. something. Right. Uh, what is the implications of that for consciousness? Well, I think some people have pretty much identified consciousness in attention, and that really does show that uh, you can't do it. Yeah, so, so in other words, that, that distinguishes consciousness yeah. from attention. That's right. And Christoph Koch's group has um, shown something in the other direction, that you can have conscious perception with little or no attention. Mm. It's not quite the opposite because of the little Right. Or no, you can't right. really show zero, zero. attention. But right. they, what they've done is they've managed to use experimental manipulations that drain all your attention off on one task, uh, uh, uh. while you are still able to do another task. Right. And so by th this kind of distinguishing and pulling off of consciousness these other characteristics, which may, many people would conflate and yes. mush them all together, and this yes. is a big consciousness. Now consciousness is by, by spinning them off, consciousness is sort of getting purer. That's right. That's exactly <laughs> right. And you know, my colleague Tom Nagel um, made this analogy, uh, um, which a very famous analogy between us and the pre-Socratic pre philosopher who didn't understand how, how um, um, uh, matter could be the same thing as energy. Well, we don't understand how consciousness can be something in the brain, but one of the things we need to do is to, is to focus in not only on the brain part, but on the consciousness part. Mm -hmm. And as you just, just described, one of the things we've managed to do is to purify our concept of consciousness by separating it out from access consciousness, from all kinds of other attentional mm -hmm. phenomena, to try to purify our concept of consciousness to make it more intelligible that it can be something in, in the brain. What may happen, though, as we're purifying the consciousness, we're, we're taking out the things that we can easily or more easily explain, and what we're yeah. left with is getting harder and harder. That could be true, too, yes. <laughs> That's right.